This series begins by telling a story about a news anchor named Lee Chong Hoon. At that time, he was reporting on a fire at a department store, when suddenly the teleprompter stopped working. Everyone in the newsroom got worried, but Chong Hoon stayed calm. He told his team not to worry and said he would do his best without the teleprompter. He relied on his memory to finish the report. When Chong Hoon was younger, he impressed his friend's dad with his amazing memory skills. Now his friend Tae Hoon is a neurologist who helps Chong Hoon. Before an interview, Chong Hoon reads up on a gene to prepare. The next day, Chong Hoon is set to interview the chairman of the Warong shop, Mr. Oh Take One. At first, Chong Hoon asks Take One about the fire at the department store. But then, Chong Hoon changes the subject to something else he's been wanting to talk about. How Take One harassed Wang's assistant years ago. This surprises everyone because Chong Hoon switches topics suddenly. Three years ago, Chong Hoon witnessed Take One mistreating his assistant. At that time, Take One stays quiet. The TV broadcast gets really intense. The producer tells Chong Hoon to end the interview. Later, Chong Hoon meets Wang's assistant and gives an old lawyer's business card to help with the harassment issue. As he leaves work, Chong Hoon notices it's snowing. This reminds him of his first love, So Yoon, who tragically died in a car accident in the snow. Back at the studio, Chong Hoon is getting ready to interview actress Yu Jin. She teases him about being more handsome in person than on TV, which embarrasses him. Her assistant pokes fun at him too. Before the interview, Hajin gives Chong Hoon some advice. Then, Hajin offers Chong Hoon coffee, but it turns out to have alcohol in it, which annoys him. He contacts Tae Hoon's doctor to make sure it won't affect him during the live broadcast. As the live interview is about to start, Chong Hoon and Hajin take their seats. There, Hajin tells Chong Hoon to change his tie and hands him a different colored one. Chong Hoon quickly changes it. Even though the producer is stressed because there's only 10 seconds left and Chong Hoon is still adjusting his tie. Soon after, the interview begins. Chong Hoon asks Hejin about her latest film and how she promotes it. They also talk about her role in the movie and her large following of 8.6 million fans. There, Chong Hoon asked if he could ask some personal questions, which made the producer stressed because they were supposed to stick to the script. Hejin said he could ask anything. Then, Chong Hoon started asking Hajin tough questions. He accused her of being inconsistent, especially with all the posts on her social media accounts. He wanted to know why she kept changing her opinions and thoughts on different things, like praising a product and then complaining about it later. Hajin seemed confused about how to respond but said she didn't like complicated things. Upon hearing that, Chong Hoon went silent. He remembered So Yoon saying something similar once. He couldn't move or respond for a while surprising the producer and people watching on the big screen. After Hajin touched his arm, Chong Hoon finally reacted. He snapped out of it when Hajin's movie trailer played. At that time, Chong Hoon told his team he would apologize for his sudden silence after the event. Then after Chong Hoon asked Hajin about the quote that left him speechless, she revealed it was from Henry David Thoreau. Meanwhile, Hak Young informed Hajin about Chong Hoon's silence incident, causing disappointment. Some viewers thought Hajin left the shoot because she was upset by Chong Hoon's question. Later, Chong Hoon got scolded when he met with the leadership for not following the script. At that time, Chairman Choi questioned if his silence was due to hyperthemesia. Chong Hoon assured her he was healthy and promised to avoid such situations in the future. Two years ago, they had discussed Chong Hoon's hyperthemesia condition. Suddenly, Chong Hoon received a call from Chairman Choi, who asked him to meet at a restaurant. There he was surprised to see Hajin. Chairman Choi told him to apologize again to Hajin before leaving with her husband, who was a producer at the station. There, Chong Hoon got upset after accidentally drinking the wrong alcohol. Hajin apologized for not separating the classes, which made Chong Hoon mad and he decided to leave. He called a taxi, but Hajin stopped him. She tried to convince him to stay and talk longer, but Chong Hoon left when Hak Yun arrived. The next day, Chong Hoon saw headlines about his meeting with Hajin. At that time, Hajin didn't care about the gossip. The articles said they were dating. When Chong Hoon entered the building, reporters rushed to ask about his relationship with Hajin. He felt confused by how things were blown out of proportion. Il Kwan gave Chong Hoon Hajin's phone number, so Chong Hoon called to clarify the dating rumors. However, Hajin used the call to publicly acknowledge their relationship to the host and fans. One evening, Chong Hoon met Hajin, who confessed her feelings for him but got turned down. They agreed to pretend to date for two weeks to help promote Hajin's movie. 
After that, they'd planned to announce their breakup due to busy schedules. However, journalists caught them together in Chong Hoon's car, so they had to flee. While driving, it started snowing, triggering memories of So Yoon's tragic death for Chong Hoon. Feeling depressed, he asked to Jean to leave and take a taxi. But she refused, saying he couldn't treat her like that because she liked him. A Jean revealed she started liking him during their interview. Her words echoed what So Yoon once said to Chong Hoon. But he denied knowing So Yoon. Meanwhile, Tae Yoon read Hei Jean's old consultation notes, where she expressed feeling pressured and wanting to disappear. He also saw a photo of Hei Jean with So Yoon from middle school. The next day, Hei Jean meets Hak Young and asks about So Yoon. Hak Young is surprised to hear that name and rushes to her room to get a diary and photos from when they were young. They used to be known as Hana and Yong and became friends through ballet practice as kids. They stayed friends all the way through high school. Meanwhile, Chong Hoon meets So Yoon's sister at a restaurant to learn about her friendship with Hei Jin. So Yoon's sister reveals their nicknames for each other, which Hei Jin as Hana and So Yoon as Yong. Chong Hoon also meets Tae Doon, who knows about the history of So Yoon and Hei Jin's friendship and their relationship. Tae Hoon finally tells Chong Hoon everything. After So Yoon's death, Hei Jin became his patient and had a hard time coping, just like Chong Hoon. He noticed similarities in their behavior, which is why he didn't tell Hei Jin. In the end, Hei Jin showed signs of improvement, and for the first time in months, she wanted to sleep. However, Tae Yoon realized she had taken too many sleeping pills he prescribed, and fell unconscious for several days. When she woke up, Hei Jin had changed. Suddenly, all her memories of So Yoon were gone. This was the only way Hei Jin could cope with the death of her best friend. Losing all memories of So Yoon made Hei Jin happier and more cheerful. Soon after, Tae Yoon showed Chong Hoon a lasting photo of So Yoon and Hei Jin together. It was the only photo left to help Hei Jin move forward. Meanwhile, the Jin's movie did better than expected, and they held a press conference where it was announced the film was selling well and becoming popular. All the articles praised her. Back at the studio, Chong Hoon was teased by the producer about dating a rising artist, which annoyed him. He contacted Tae Yoon to ask if Hei Jin could recover her memory. Tae Yoon warned that this might cause her to suffer again, but he couldn't guarantee what would happen. At home, Hei Jin is still hoping for a call from Chong Hoon, even though she's trying to reach out to him, and they hardly see each other. Soon, Chong Hoon calls and they agree to meet at a cafe that night. At the cafe, Hei Jin almost falls while climbing the stairs but Chong Hoon catches her, and they end up hugging. The atmosphere in the cafe makes him happy. There, Hejin takes advantage of the moment to take photos of Chong Hoon for her personal collection and takes a selfie with him. Chong Hoon asks about their two-week dating agreement, but because the film is doing well, they decide to extend it for two more months. At that time, Hejin wants to keep feeling good and stay together to avoid ruining the film's success. Chong Hoon agrees to her request. This makes her happy but also confused. Chong Hoon seemed kind and gentle. But their date ends with disappointment when he says he never wants to see her again. This leaves Hejin feeling sad. Then, as Hejin got home, someone took photos of them and even scratched Chong Hoon's face with a cutter knife. Hejin shared the story of her meeting with Chong Hoon, but it didn't end happily because he doesn't want to see or talk to her again. Approaching Hejin's house, a group of excited fans awaited her arrival, cheering to meet her and giving her many gifts. Most of the gifts were creative items featuring photos of Chong Hoon and Hejin. Meanwhile, Chong Hoon arrived at his office and was surprised to find gifts on his desk. At that time, director Choi informed him they would attend an awards ceremony together and invited the director of Hejin's upcoming film. However, Chong Hoon said he doesn't want to interview Hejin on his show, worried it would stir up more questions about their relationship. But director Choi insisted it would boost their network's ratings leaving Chong Hoon feeling overwhelmed by the situation. Later that day, Hejin attended a fan meeting where she signed autographs. She was thrilled to see her career improving since pretending to date Chong Hoon. Hejin wanted to share the good news with him, but she realized it might make him angrier if she contacted him again, especially since the upcoming guest on her show was director Ji. Meanwhile, Chong Hoon decided to watch Hejin's film to understand the story before interviewing the director. He wondered who was more unfortunate between them. Was it him because he can't forget his memories, or Hei Jin, who had to forget hers to move on? After the movie, Chong Hoon found himself surrounded by three fangirls who had watched the film with him. They took photos together before leaving, showing support for Chong Hoon and Hei Jin. 
The next day, Chong Hoon made headlines for watching the film. At the same time, the Jean read the news and felt hopeful about their romance. Meanwhile, Chong Hoon and director Choi prepared for the award ceremony. Inside the function room, Chong Hoon is surprised to see Hee Jean in a stunning red dress, mentioning she'll be one of the presenters. When the winners were announced, Chong Hoon won the production year award for his show, Lee Chong Hoon's News Live. In his speech, he thanked everyone who voted and gave a special message to Hee Jean, wishing her future to be happier than her past. Later, Joe started opening gifts from fans and Chong Hoon gave them all to him. Among the gifts was an envelope with a photo of Hee Jean and Chong Hoon, but Chong Hoon's face was scratched out. There, Joe showed these photos to Chong Hoon, who recalled similar incidents with So Yoon in the past. Turns out, So Yoon had attracted a fan who became obsessed with her, leading to troubling situations. <laughs> Chong Hoon worries the same might happen to Hei Jin and decides to find her. Then he eventually finds Hei Jin in a confrontation with three men. Thankfully, they turn out to be fans of both Hei Jin and Chong Hoon, and they manage to resolve the situation peacefully. At that time, Hak Yum takes care of the men while Hei Jin and Chong Hoon bid farewell. There, Chong Hoon warns Hei Jin to be cautious when going out. While at home, Hak Yum received a strange message from Chong Hoon, so they talked privately on the phone. Chong Hoon told Hak Young about the threatening photos he received, where her face was scratched out. They agreed to keep this information secret from Hee Jin. Suddenly, CEO Kyung Hee mentioned that Hee Jin now has security guards due to her increased popularity. She also mentioned that one of the events was canceled. Hee Jin became suspicious and pressured Hak Young to be honest with her. At that time, Hak Young was forced to reveal the truth about the threatening photos to Hee Jin. Worried about Chong Hoon, Hee Jin contacted him and reminded them both to be careful because the threatening photos were concerning. She asked him to send messages after work so she knows he's safe. Then, during an interview, Chong Hoon was called to Director Choi's office because Director Ji was there. Chong Hoon found Director Ji taking photos of Director Choi with his camera. After Chong Hoon's interview with Director Ji, Hee Jin received a call from Director Ji to plan a meeting. Turns out, Chong Hoon also accepted the invitation. During the meeting, Director Ji pressured Chong Hoon to drink. Worried about Chong Hoon's alcohol allergy, the Jean took a sip of the drink for him. At that time, Director Ji got drunk and went to the bathroom. Then, Chong Hoon took the opportunity to check the photos on Director Ji's camera for anything suspicious. When Director Ji returned, he became angry seeing Ha Jin and Chong Hoon close together in the room. At that moment, Chong Hoon ended up pushing Director Ji to the floor, and Hak Yum was contacted to take Director Ji home afterward. Soon after, Chong Hoon takes Ha Jin home, feeling suspicious that Director Ji might be the one who sent the threatening photos, but Ha Jin denies it. While they're on the way, they notice a suspicious person breaking into Ha Jin's house and sneaking into her room. The person panics when they see Chong Hoon and Ha Jin arriving. Later, they're interrupted by Moon Shul, who asks Hak Yum to accompany Ha Jin while she's away. They hear noises and gasps from inside the house. Shortly after, Chong Hoon chases the intruder and catches him, revealing him to be reporter Su Chong, who was assigned to photograph a Jean and Chong Hoon. At that time, Chong Hoon takes the memory card from the reporter and lets him go. The next day, Kyung Ye gives Hei Jean another script, written by a popular writer with a news anchor theme. At that time, Hei Jean and Hak Yong have some doubts but remain optimistic. Meanwhile, Chong Hoon and Taeyun visit Chong Hoon's parents. During lunch, Chong Hoon's father pressures him to introduce his new girlfriend to them, hinting it's time for Chong Hoon to get married. Chong Hoon decides to be honest with his mother about his fake relationship with Hajin. Director Choi, who prioritizes high ratings, recruits Hajin and Chong Hoon to narrate a documentary for their TV station. Chong Hoon feels compelled to participate, so he contacts Hajin. They agree to help each other out. Ha Jin will narrate the documentary with him, while Sung Ho will provide some support in preparing Ha Jin for an upcoming drama. Chong Hoon receives another blue envelope, this time with a photo of his scratched face. Suddenly, memories of So Yoon flood his mind, recalling the terrifying ordeal she went through. In a flashback, Chong Hoon recalls a phone call where he heard So Yoon pleading for help, but he couldn't pinpoint her location. 
Arriving late to the scene, he witnessed So Yoon being dragged to the roof of a building by her stalker, who ultimately pushed her off. At that time, Chong Hoon caught a glimpse of the perpetrator before unleashing his anger. Despite the perpetrator's attempt at a heinous act, they were arrested by the police. There he heads to a mental hospital to confront the perpetrator, Moon Sung Oh. The next day, Chong Hoon and Hae Jin went out for dinner with the writer and director of their latest drama. While they were together, Hae Jin was left alone with the director, who wasn't pleased with her casting. The director preferred another actress for the role because they didn't think Hae Jin was good enough yet. By accident, Chong Hoon overheard the director's conversation and realized it was because of his girlfriend. When he rejoined them, accompanied by the writer, he brought up what he had heard. Chong Hoon teased the director about it and encouraged Hae Jin to stick with the drama, disregarding what the director had said. There, Chong Hoon learns about Hae Jin's actions while talking to Tae Yoon about her memory issues. Later, Hae Jin invites Tae Yoon to dinner to learn more about Chong Hoon. Tae Yoon had previously mentioned that Chong Hoon suffers from hyperthemesia, a condition where he can't forget any memories, which has no cure. At Hae Jin's house, Hak Young asks Moon Chol to check the CCT footage, where they see men wandering around Hae Jin's yard. There, Moon Chol lies to Hak Young, claiming the CCTV settings were wrong and nothing was captured. Meanwhile, director Ji meets with Hae Jin to discuss a new film script he wrote for her. However, Hae Jin declines, telling about her busy schedule with an upcoming drama. Suddenly, director Ji becomes emotional and tries to hold Hae Jin's hand, but Hak Young's arrival interrupts them. At the TV station, Hae Jin starts to learn more about Chong Hoon's workplace. She sits near him in the staff room, and they discuss the news reporting process. Their conversation becomes a source of teasing from the producer. When Chong Hoon's mother visits, she invites Hae Jin to join them for a meal, and they leave together. Despite having just met, it's clear they're forming a close bond. After dinner, they take photos together. The next day, Hae Jin begins documenting everything about Chong Hoon in her diary. At that time, Chong Hoon discovers her notebook and reads all the notes she's written about him. Hae Jin explains she doesn't want to forget anything about him. Later, Chong Hoon takes Hae Jin to the hospital where his friend is being treated. While there, he sees his father entering the hospital and decides to follow him, with Hae Jin following him. Inside a room, they find a photo of Chong Hoon's mother. Chong Hoon questions his father about it and learns that his mother passed away from cancer, a fact she had kept from him to avoid worrying him. At that time, Chong Hoon is devastated by the news. Soon after, Tae Yoon arrives at the hospital with clothes for Chong Hoon and sees Hae Jin sitting alone. Meanwhile, Chong Hoon is seen grieving alone in his room. Not long after, reporter Su Chun arrives at the funeral home with the intention of taking a photo of Hae Jin, but Hak Young spots him and prevents him from doing so. Director Choi's arrival at the funeral home scares off the other reporters. Il Kwan, Chong Hoon's colleague, becomes suspicious of director Ji and Moon Chol, thinking they might be behind the threatening photos Chong Hoon received. During the funeral, Chong Hoon appears sad as he lays his mother to rest. Despite being advised to take a week off to recover, he returns to work, surprising everyone. Upon knowing that director Choi is unhappy with Chong Hoon's decision and bans him from broadcasting, However, Chong Hoon argues that taking time off won't help because he never forgets anything. Meanwhile, director Ji meets Kyung Ye and pressures her into allowing him to collaborate with Hae Jin on his next film. He tries to threaten her into agreeing, forcing Hae Jin and Hak Yoon to accept the decision. Soon after, Tae Yoon tried to reach out to Chong Hoon, but Chong Hoon ignored him. Tae Yoon shared this with Hak Yoon and Hae Jin, prompting them to visit Chong Hoon's house. When Hae Jin enters, they argue with Chong Hoon blaming himself for his mother's struggles. There, Hae Jin reassures him that his mother always prioritizes him because she loves him dearly. But Chong Hoon feels misunderstood, thinking Hae Jin doesn't understand his relationship with his mother due to her memory issues. Offended, Hae Jin decides to leave. Later, Hae Jin meets Tae Yoon to discuss a dream she had about being in a ballet studio with So Yoon. Tae Yoon advises her not to dwell on it too much. They then search for Chong Hoon and track him using a phone app, leading them to the burial site of Chong Hoon's mother. They find Chong Hoon and bring him to Tae Yoon's house. On the other hand, Chong Hoon wakes briefly and remembers seeing Hae Jin before fainting again. At the same time, Hae Jin, feeling unwell, falls asleep, unaware of a stalker climbing the wall and tampering with the CCTV. The stalker quietly enters her room, approaching her as she sleeps. The next day, Kyung Yi went to Hae Jin's house 
and noticed the CCTV had been painted black. She hurried to tell Hakyong, and they both rushed to Eugene's bedroom, where she was still asleep. When entered, they were shocked to find Heijin's photos plastered on the wall. Chong Hoon met Il Kwan, who informed him about the threat at Heijin's house. Upon hearing this, Chong Hoon hurried to Heijin's residence. In the yard, he saw the broken CCTV and threatening photos in her bedroom. Kamei told them they were searching for a new house for Heijin to live in. Chong Hoon offered to help find a new place. Meanwhile, Taeyun's father met with Taeyun and inquired about Chong Hoon's condition. He requested Taeyun to be Chong Hoon's doctor and keep him informed. Later at the apartment, Chong Hoon found a safe place for Hajin and Hak Yong to stay. When Hajin asked who owned the place, Chong Hoon didn't disclose the information. As he left, Hajin and Hak Yong wondered about the owner, and Hak Yong found photos near the record player. Meanwhile, Il Kwan, who was at Chong Hoon's house, asked if Chong Hoon had informed the owner of the apartment that Hajin was staying there. Chong Hoon said it belonged to his friend and instructed Il Kwan to stay at the hotel, providing his credit card for expenses as long as Hajin was using the place. One day, while alone at the apartment, Hak Young heard a strange noise from the bedroom. Peeking inside, she saw a man packing things. At that time, Hak Young bravely confronted him, startling Il Kwan. It turned out the man was the owner of the apartment. Meanwhile, Director Ji arrived at Hajin's house with a large portrait of her. He tried to contact Hajin. But Hak Young, who answered, said Hajin was shooting late, which annoyed Director Ji. Moon Shul also protested his schedule, wanting to work with Hajin instead of Si Min. He denied being Hajin's stalker and questioned why he was being kicked out. Later, Chong Hoon approached reporter Su Chung's car and urged him to get out, but Su Chung refused. When the light turned green, he drove off. Hajin later encountered Su Chung in the lobby of her office, but he quickly fought. Chong Hoon chased him down and retrieved the photos Su Chung had taken of Hajin, forcing him to confess that someone had hired him to do so. The next day, Hajin and Hak Young were hanging out at a cafe when some of Hajin's fans secretly snapped photos of her and posted them online. The stalker saw the post and realized Hajin was at the cafe. Around the same time, Chong Hoon showed up to meet Hajin. As they left the cafe, he noticed a motorbike rider lurking nearby suspiciously close to Hajin and Hak Yong. His gut feeling was right, caused the rider zoom towards them, but Hak Yong, sensing danger, pulled Hajin out of harm's way, getting knocked out herself in the process. Witnessing the incident triggered memories for Hajin. She recalled a similar situation in the past when she saved So Yoon from a motorbike accident. But Chong Hoon's arrival snapped her back to reality. Hak Yong was taken to the hospital, and the police arrived to check the CCTV footage. Back at the apartment, Hak Young asked Chong Hoon to stay with Hajin to protect her. Soon after, Hajin went to her room to rest, but the memory of saving So Yoon overwhelmed her, making her feel weak. She asked Chong Hoon to stay with her. Meanwhile, Chong Hoon received a call from So Yoon's stalker, Sung Ho, warning him to protect Hajin before it's too late. At that time, Chong Hoon wanted to know who was stalking Hajin, because Sung Ho was supposed to be in a mental hospital, but Sung Ho didn't answer. Hak Young remembered the motorbike rider who threatened Hajin. She heard footsteps and went to her bedroom door. When she opened it, she startled Il Kwan, who had come to visit. They ended up watching a scary movie together. However, Hak Young wasn't scared, but Il Kwan was terrified. To prank him, Hak Young styled her hair to look spooky, which scared Il Kwan even more. The next day, Chong Hoon took Hajin to the hospital to see Hak Young. When Hak Young got a call from Hajin, she was surprised because she was on the couch while Il Kwan was asleep in his bed. She woke up Il Kwan, and when Ajin and Chong Hoon arrived, they acted like everything was normal. Meanwhile, Chong Hoon visited Sung Ho at the mental hospital, still curious about who ordered him to stalk Ajin, but Sung Ho didn't answer. Shortly after, Kyung Yi met with Hak Young and Ajin to discuss involving the police to investigate Hei Jin's stalker. Ajin informed Chong Hoon about Kyung Yi's plan. The police were seen investigating Heijin's house. At that time, reporter Su Chung transferred his photos to an external hard drive and fled his house through the window when detectives arrived. There, Chong Hoon warned Su Chung to surrender to the police to avoid tarnishing his name. Soon after, Chong Hoon gave himself four hours to think, but reporter Su Chung had no other option but to surrender. Chong Hoon had recorded evidence of Su Chung admitting his involvement with Heijin's stalker 
so Su Chong decided to turn himself in. Meanwhile, the police met with Ajin and Kyung-ae. They revealed that after questioning Su Chong, they discovered that the stalker was someone who knew Hajin before she became famous. The police then questioned Director Ji. Hajin started having nightmares again. She remembered being injured while saving So Yoon from being hit by a motorbike. Hajin woke up feeling confused. On the other hand, while Chong Hoon was at his father's place, he read a letter written by his late mother. In the letter, he found the answer to the question he had been longing to know. His mother was always happy to have him as her son. Meanwhile, Hak Young went to the parking basement and was shocked to find her car missing. Sadly, it had been stolen right in front of her, and despite her efforts to chase after the thief, she couldn't catch them. In the lobby, Kyung Ye and Hajin were waiting for their car after Kyung Ye got a call from Director Song. Kyung Ye told Hajin to get into her car first. Hak Young tried calling Hajin, but he didn't answer. When Hajin got into the car, she wondered why the door was closed. Suddenly, the driver covered Hajin's face making it impossible for her to see. The driver also turned off Ajin's phone so nobody could reach her. Kyung-ye was shocked to see the car driving away, and hak Young arrived shouting for the car to stop, but it was too late. hak Young contacted chong Hoon to inform him that Hajin had been kidnapped. chong Hoon and hak Young were seen at the police station, where they found hak Young's car abandoned with Hajin's switched-off phone and a needle inside, but Hajin was nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, Vajim remained unconscious in the kidnapper's room. At the police station, CCTV footage revealed Moon Shaw sneaking into the parking garage where Hak Young's car was parked. Shortly after, police checked the camera footage and went to search Moon Shaw's place. Afterward, the police went to the vacation home where Moon Shaw was staying, but they didn't find him there. Meanwhile, Vajim slowly regained consciousness and found himself in a room filled with burning candles. At that time, the police raided Moonshaw's house and arrested him, taking him to the police station for questioning. Back at the room where Hajin was trapped, he cried out for help to escape. Then Director Ji surprised him by bringing food, revealing himself as the kidnapper. Switching to Chong Hoon, he followed the clues to a lake mentioned in the ticket and found Director Ji's car parked nearby. Convinced that Director Ji was the culprit, Chong Hoon called the police. When Chong Hoon arrived at Director Ji's house, he cut off the power and attacked him when he came out to fix it. After a struggle, Chong Hoon managed to lock Director Ji in the garage and found Hajin locked in a room. Just in time, the police and Hak Yum arrived. Director Ji was taken away by the police, surrounded by reporters at the station. As the police questioned Moon Chol, he admits that he broke into Hajin's apartment intending to steal because he needed money. He had no involvement in Hajin's kidnapping and was shocked to learn that Director Ji was the culprit. Ajin, though starting her birthday poorly in the hospital, wakes up to many gifts from her fans. At that time, Kyung-ae, hak Young, and Eo Kwan celebrate with her, bringing a cake to the hospital. Meanwhile, at the mental hospital, Sung Ho watches the news reporting Director Ji's arrest as Ajin's stalker. He recalls Director Ji's visit to him, where they discussed Sung Ho's tactics to threaten Chong Hoon's life, reminding him of his own obsession with So Yoon. Turns out Director Ji had planned to do the same thing with Ajin. They had worked together with the plan where Director Ji would be with Hajin and Sung Ho, would ultimately take revenge on Chong Hoon. But now, with Director Ji arrested, Sung Ho has to carry out his plans alone. Chong Hoon gives Hajin a birthday present, but it doesn't cheer her up. She expresses her fear that Chong Hoon might leave her now that they no longer have a reason to meet. However, Chong Hoon assures Hajin that he's not going anywhere and wants to stay by her side. This brings a smile to Hajin's face. Returning home, Hajin and Hak Young are greeted by kyung -ae. She's back home now that the stalker mystery has been solved. Hajin tells Hak Young that she's in a real relationship with Chong Hoon. Now let's talk about Chong Hoon. He's back at work, and his boss told him some news. Director Choi got suspended because she changed Chong Hoon's role without telling the higher-ups. Then, Chong Hoon went to see Tae Doon's dad for some advice. They talked about So Yoon, and if Chong Hoon still remembered her. You see, Chong Hoon is dating Hajin now. But Taeyoon's dad was curious if Chong Hoon still had feelings for So Yoon. Chong Hoon explained that just because he dated So Yoon before doesn't mean he can't date someone else now. Meanwhile, Hajin gave Chong Hoon some clothes for their first date. They went out together, having a good time. Later at the cafe, Hajin overheard some ladies chatting. There she heard someone called Han Na, 
which reminded her of her past with so Yoon. This got her thinking about it, and when hak Yum came back, she noticed that Jean was lost in thought. That Jean asked about someone named Yong, but hak Yum didn't respond. Later, Taeyoon told Chong Hoon why ha Jean was feeling guilty. It turns out that Jean blames herself for Yong's death, and that's why she's acting unusual. Then hak Yum shared some info with ha Jean about Yong. They used to be close friends, but there was an accident involving a motorbike that made ha Jean's memory blurry. She doesn't remember much about it. Meanwhile, hak Yum overheard Il Kwan arguing with his ex-girlfriend. She got caught by the security guy and Il Kwan took this chance to break up with his ex and express his feelings for hak Yum. The next day, ha Jin and Chong Hoon decide to go to the movies together. At the movie, they run into hak Yum unexpectedly. There, ha Jin scolds hak Yum, surprising her. But Il Kwan jumps in and playfully covers hak Yum's eyes, not realizing that ha Jin and Chong Hoon are right there. Eventually, Il Kwan admits that he and hak Yum are dating. Next, ha Jin starts working at the same TV station where Chong Hoon works. Chong Hoon is impressed by how well ha Jin is doing on air. Mu Chol gets a second chance to prove he's changed and won't steal again. hak Yum, feeling compassion for his mother, hopes he'll turn over a new leaf. Meanwhile, Taehyun's father visits Sung Ho at the mental hospital. Sung Ho, who has mental issues, ends up taking Taehyun's father hostage with stolen scissors. He threatens to harm him before escaping from the hospital. In another scene, Ha Jin is meeting with her fans. Chong Hoon gets a message from Il Kwan about someone escaping from a mental hospital, and they need to cover the news. After checking online, Chong Hoon finds out it's Sung Ho who escaped. Shortly after, Sung Ho was at Ha Jin's fan meeting, Video calls Chong Hoon. This worries Chong Hoon, who rushes to Ha Jin's place. At that time, Sung Ho interacts with Ha Jin, who initially doesn't recognize him. But when Sung Ho says a special phrase, memories of So Yoon flood back to Ha Jin, and she faints. Then, Chong Hoon accompanies her to the hospital. There, Hak Yum tells Chong Hoon she didn't notice anyone suspicious in the crowd. Ha Jin begins to recall memories of So Yoon including the accident that ended Hae Jin's ballet career and the time Sung Ho posed as So Yoon's boyfriend to get the pass go to her apartment. When Hae Jin remembers So Yoon, she gets upset with Hak Yoon for hiding the truth from her. She insists on visiting So Yoon's grave. Hae Jin becomes emotional when she sees So Yoon's ashes, apologizing for not visiting sooner. Meanwhile, Tae Yoon goes to see his father in the hospital. He's angry that his father's actions led to Sung Ho escaping. At that time, Tae Moon warns his father that he won't forgive him if anything happens to Chong Hoon and Hae Jin. At Hae Jin's house, Chong Hoon arrives to meet her, but she tells him she remembers So Yoon. She realizes they both know So Yoon and decides they shouldn't be together. Hae Jin believes So Yoon was Chong Hoon's first love and wants to end their relationship, feeling guilty. Despite Chong Hoon's reassurances, Hae Jin insists on breaking up, wanting to go back to when they didn't know each other. The next day, at the TV news, Chong Hoon reports about Sung Ho's escape from the hospital. Then, Ha Jin meets Tae Yoon, who urges her to be honest about her feelings so he can truly help her. There, Tae Yoon reminds Ha Jin about Chong Hoon's unwavering dedication to her. Even though Chong Hoon knows that Ha Jin will eventually regain her memory, he promises to stay by her side. Next, during a meeting, TV producers discuss canceling an upcoming drama due to budget issues. They don't want it to be aired on other stations. Later in the lobby, reporters ask Ha Jin about the drama's cancellation. Seeing Ha Jin feeling down, Kyung Hye tells Hak Yoon to cheer her up. The following day, Hak Yoon can't find Ha Jin at home. She asks Chong Hoon for help to search for her. Despite the rain, Chong Hoon keeps looking until he finds Ha Jin, expressing his concerns to her. Ha Jin feels guilty about So Yoon's death. At that time, Chong Hoon holds no hard feelings, expressing his genuine feelings for her. Ha Jin then changes her mind and retracts her decision. Chong Hoon respects her choice to still want to part ways, and he takes Ha Jin home that night. At the office, Ha Jin and Hak Yum are surprised to find Moon Shul working in Kyung Hae's office. There, Ha Jin meets Kyung Hae, who gives her a new film script from director Song to review. In the story, there are other characters. Ha Jin is curious about who the friend in her role is, but Hak Yum doesn't know either. The assistant director invites Ha-jin to meet the puppy who will be her co-star in the commercial. She is surprised to see Chong Hoon there, playing with the puppy. Shortly after, Chong Hoon announces that he'll be partnering with Ha-jin for the advertising film. 
Hajin feels uneasy about Chong Hoon's kindness all along. As filming begins, Hajin starts shooting scenes while holding the puppy. In the next shot, the director instructs Hajin and Chong Hoon to act together. Chong Hoon is excited about this, but Hajin still seems doubtful. Despite her uncertainty, they complete their scenes together well. Meanwhile, Chong Hoon invites Yeo Kwan to cover the news. Upon arrival, they're met by detectives. Chong Hoon asks about Sung Ho, who has apparently fooled. Yeo Kwan reports from the scene. Later, Chong Hoon receives a call from Sung Ho, who only professes his eternal love for So Yoon before hanging up. Sung Ho has stolen the jar containing So Yoon's ashes from the memorial site before Chong Hoon and the detectives arrive. Chong Hoon becomes suspicious and heads to the roof of the building where So Yoon fell. They spot Sung Ho underneath the building and Chong Hoon goes up to search for him. Suddenly, Sung Ho attacks Chong Hoon by stabbing him in the stomach. Fortunately, the police and detectives arrive in time to save Chong Hoon. However, Sung Ho edges towards the roof's edge, intent on reuniting with So Yoon in death. Suddenly, Ha Jin gets a call from the detective informing her that Chong Hoon is in the hospital. Accompanied by Hak Yong, they rush to see him. At that time, Chong Hoon is undergoing surgery because of what Sung Ho did after escaping from the mental hospital. Fortunately, the surgery goes well. When Chong Hoon wakes up, he finds Ha Jin by his side. Later, Chong Hoon briefly visits Sung Ho's room in the hospital. Sung Ho is alive but paralyzed and unable to move on his own. Meanwhile, reporter Su Chong, who was previously jailed for collaborating with director Ji, is now released. Despite the chaos, Hak Yong and Eel Kwan seem to be growing closer. As Chong Hoon enters his workplace, he's swarmed by journalists asking about the book written about him. Reporter Su Chung, now freed, is among them. News about the book spreads rapidly, reaching Hajin and Chong Hoon themselves. Suddenly, Chong Hoon asked to meet Taehyun, where Taehyun apologized for his father's actions in publishing a book that disclosed private patient information. At that time, Taehyun tried to stop his father and even surrendered to the police, but they didn't respond. Now, Chong Hoon must decide whether to sue Taehyun or if Taehyun should report his father himself. After that, Hajin invites Chong Hoon to a nighttime picnic date, where they reassure each other and focus on their relationship. Meanwhile, the police arrive at Taehyun's father's office to arrest him for violating medical laws by revealing patient records in his book. After leaving the police station, Taehyun's father confronts him for embarrassing him, but Taehyun had warned him not to publish the book. In another scene, reporter Su Chung does a live stream explaining the complicated relationship between So Yoon, Chong Hoon, and Hajin. Su Chung's report angers Hajin, who finds journalists waiting outside his house. Chong Hoon arrives and quickly takes Hajin inside without making any comments. Shortly after, Chong Hoon got a call from Taehyun, who told him he was heading to the airport to volunteer as a doctor in America. Meanwhile, Hajin arrived at the office and heard from Kyungye that they received a call about a contract penalty. At that time, the three of them discussed it, and Kyungi mentioned that Hei Jin's career was being affected by the rumors. Unfortunately, the controversy not only led to Hei Jin losing a contract, but also impacted Chong Hoon's job as a news anchor. Management even considered replacing him. However, director Choi stood up for Chong Hoon, threatening to resign if they fired him. Then, after finishing his broadcast, Chong Hoon handed in his resignation letter to director Choi. He believed it was the best way to protect director Choi and the rest of the team, even though director Choi disagreed. Later that evening, Chong Hoon called a Jean to tell her he had quit his job as a reporter. Things weren't straightforward for both a Jean and Chong Hoon. Meanwhile, Hak Yong met Chong Hoon to inform him that a Jean was planning to go to America. A Jean was seen packing her bags, preparing to travel to America for a film shoot. Later that night, Chong Hoon met a Jean to discuss her plans. A Jean, shared her honest feelings about their situation, acknowledging that things wouldn't be easy, so she decided to break up. She believed it would be too difficult if they stayed together. Two years later, Chong Hoon was still working at the news station, but his position had been demoted to a news reporter. He teamed up with Il Kwan. Despite this setback, Chong Hoon kept up with Hei Jin's success in Hollywood. She had become a successful actress, and she made sure to visit her home country. At that time, director Choi invited Chong Hoon to lunch and asked him to bring back live news reports he had worked on. Upon hearing that, Chong Hoon objected, saying he preferred his current role as a reporter, which allowed him to relax in the evenings. However, director Choi insisted 
especially since their new leader admired Chong Hoon's work. While waiting at a red light on his way to visit his father, Chong Hoon spotted a woman in a car that resembled Ha Jin. After the car passed, he realized it was indeed Ha Jin driving. Although she seemed to recognize him, she pretended not to see him. Later, Chong Hoon stopped by Ha Jin's former house, only to discover it now belonged to someone else. He learned that Kumei's niece lived there and would leave when Ha Jin returned to Korea. Meanwhile, Ha Jin rested at home while Hak Yum went out to spend time with Il Kwan. Outside Il Kwan's apartment, Hak Yum greeted him, but Il Kwan became jealous when he saw her hugging his driver, leading to a misunderstanding. The next day, Hak Yong, Ha Jin, and Kyung Ye accompanied Ha Jin to her meeting with the film director. Ha Jin reminded the director of an incident from years ago regarding his reporting, but he assured her that he didn't plan to cancel at the last minute. Instead, he wanted to include Ha Jin in his film project. Meanwhile, Chang Hoon returned as the news anchor for his segment, with Tae Yum as his first guest. There, Tae Yum discussed his plans for a new event, resulting from his volunteer work which Ha Jin secretly watched on her cell phone. The following day, Ha Jin went to the library where she unexpectedly ran into Chong Hoon, leading to an awkward conversation between them. There, Ha Jin explained that she was only visiting Korea briefly before returning to America. Their interaction was cut short when fans began taking photos of Ha Jin, making her wanting to leave. At that time, Chong Hoon tried to follow her but lost sight of her. As he left the library, he couldn't help but feel dreamy. Unexpectedly, Chong Hoon's car was hit by a taxi. When the taxi driver sought permission from the passenger to exit the taxi, it turned out to be Ha Jin. They met again due to the car accident, and Chong Hoon offered to take Ha Jin to her house. Soon after, they had a conversation outside Ha Jin's house. Chong Hoon shared his sincere feelings about everything that happened since Ha Jin went abroad. He regretted breaking up with her and ending their relationship. For the past two years, he missed her terribly. Surprisingly, Ha Jin felt the same way. She regretted leaving Chong Hoon alone when she left. Meanwhile, Hak Yum went to see Il Kwan and made a proposal, which he accepted. The next day, Tae Yoon reconciles with his family and resolves his differences with his father after two years of not speaking. He now feels much happier and more alive than when he was running his own clinic. Meanwhile, Ha Jin asks Chong Hoon to help her decide on her next career move, whether to return to America or to film a Korean movie. At that time, Chong Hoon advises Ha Jin to prioritize her own happiness and do what's best for her. During lunch, Chong Hoon introduces Ha Jin to his father. Outside Ha Jin's house, journalists are gathered, but the two of them pass by without making any comments. Later, during a press release, it's announced that Ha Jin will star in a new Korean film titled Find Me in Your Memory. At that time, reporters start asking questions, and Ha Jin drops hints related to Chong Hoon. Among the journalists, Chong Hoon also asks questions on behalf of his television station, drawing attention to his presence. Despite the challenges they face, Ha Jin and Chong Hoon's love for each other prevails and triumphs over everything. The series ends. The moral lesson from this film is remember, folks, even if your ex crashes your car, it could lead to a reunion of epic proportions. So keep your seatbelts fastened and your heart open, because love might just be waiting around the next traffic light.